Hello! Beginning of May, springtime in Tennessee. And like so many people, springtime gets me thinking about whether I wanted to buy me a tractor. And uh, I thought it's time to retire my old LK30. I don't think my wife liked it all that much. She, you know, old oily machine, loud and everything else, and uh, manual transmission. And we traded for this uh, CK3510 SE cab, and uh, I bought it. I'm the proud owner, uh, 200 hours on it. But today I thought I'd like to uh, talk a little bit about grapples. We sold about 400 grapples last year, and uh, it's becoming something you know that we sell on about 70% of uh, the tractors we sell. It's an extremely popular item and uh, for a lot of people they wouldn't be, and me included, you wouldn't be caught without it. Um, I've got some work to do with it today here at the lot. I'm, uh, I'm at Pleasant View on the, on the back lot where we kind of just store junk until we tend to it. And uh, I'll show you what we've got going here. We get pallets. Man, do we get pallets. We try to give them away, everything else, but uh, we get a bunch of them. And this is just a load of junk from my yard that I brought in. So, today's going to be burn day. Time to burn the pallets and the junk, and also time to talk about using a grapple. A when you're selecting a grapple or when your dealer is offering you a grapple, this is just advice. Um, I hope the wind's not pummeling my microphone. There's a lot of grapples out there that are, that are very, very expensive. There's a lot that cost a lot of money. And essentially, though, a grapple is, is one of the simplest items you can buy. It has one or two hydraulic pistons. It has hydraulic lines that go to the third function, uh, third function outlets in the front of the tractor, skid steer, and some pivot points with grease cirques. This one is a grapple rake, uh, and as the name implies, you can you can drag it along the uh, the ground, and you know with and, and dig up some some roots and some debris. It also, uh, the grapple rakes squeeze almost all the way together, uh, as opposed to a root grapple. We sell half and half. Half the people want a root grapple, which opens really wide and picks up logs really well. And some people want one that closes tighter. Um, I, bought, I bought this because mostly I do smaller junk. And as to which grapple to select, and I, I'm not talking whether it's a root grapple or a grapple rake, I'm talking about you know, whether to spend a lot of money. Um, there's items that you shouldn't be, uh, you shouldn't be cheap on. And there's items that, in my humble opinion, I would be cheap on, and I am. I bought this one. This is not an expensive grapple. Uh, I don't know, somewhere a little over $1,000, as opposed to some that are $2,400. And I don't think it really matters. Um, if you buy one that's super expensive, it'll, uh, it'll look flashier, it'll maybe have better paint, it'll be made out of uh, a different grade of steel, uh, for example, AR500 steel, which has the advantage of being very light and very strong, and that's cool, but unless you're on a very, very, very small tractor that you're extremely concerned about the overall weight of the grapple, I don't think it matters. This uh, CK3510, I've got the tires filled. Uh, today I've got a five foot rotary cutter on the back. I've got plenty of ballast and I know it'll lift quite a bit. And you know, we'll, we'll see. I'm just, I'm just saying, if, if you're gonna be, uh, if there's a place that I would recommend that you save some money, it would be on your grapple selection. I'm just not a fan of spending 25 or whatever hundred dollars or twenty eight hundred dollars uh, for a grapple that I'm going to uh, stick in the ground it's going to lay outside it's going to rust and and all it is is a is a 
a piston or two and a couple of lines. Um, but anyway, that's just my thought. Let's see, uh, let's see it work a little bit. That's fun. Pretty cool, pretty cool. So anyway, grapples. That's, uh, that's probably the least expensive grapple we have and uh, it made short work of a nasty job. Didn't have to step in the mud one time. It's, uh, yeah, it's the uh, cat's uh, rear end. All right, I got everything stacked up and ready to set it alight. Something occurred to me I put this uh, rotary cutter on the back for ballast to help me with what I was just doing. But as long as it's on there, I want to show you something. When you're using a rotary cutter, I did a video a couple of months ago, month ago, whatever, uh, best ways to damage your tractor, best ways to break your tractor, I think I called it. And one of the things I talked about is how to damage a rotary cutter. And uh, there's, uh, there's a symptom called ringing. And what happens is, uh, like right here, I'll need to back in and, and pull out and cut this, uh, so I have to back in. If you're backing up a rotary cutter while it's on the ground and you hit something unexpected, the, the jolt will cause the swinging blades underneath to pop up and hit the, hit the underside of the deck and, uh, and bust all the way through sometimes, in fact, leave a cut hole uh, in the top of the deck. It's called ringing. And uh, the way not to do that is to back up, raise, put it down, pull forward. So I'm going to do that real quick. As you know, when we start the PTO, we start it at uh, low speed, practically idle, and then we spool it up. Uh, so as not to jolt everything.
Okay, start the cutter. Then you can spool it up. I'm backing up with it raised so that I don't hit anything unexpected and cause a jolt, thus ruining the cutter. I've adjusted it to drop very slowly, so pardon me for that. And then out you go. sped it up a little bit on the drop. I didn't expect to be filming. Anyway, you get the idea. Raise it up, back it up, Drop it down. That's all. It avoids ruining your cutter. Man, I, I could do this all day. I don't want to go into work. But anyway, that's it. Thank you.